this morning. Glory to God. You may be seated today. We are so thankful that you're here this morning. We got a lot out today, some sickness, some traveling, some the sheets was too heavy for them to get up this morning. But uh, we're glad you're here this morning. Yes, amen. And you just get in and worship the Lord with us. We're a little uh, under man this morning. We have some out in the children's <laughs> church department, some out in the worship team and other parts. But uh, you're here this morning, and that's really all that matters. Yes. And you, you just get in, worship the Lord with us in spirit and in truth. Way of announcements. Uh, don't forget, we got a lot of things coming up uh, here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, starting tonight, uh, Sister Alicia Webb will be with us. She's a missionary to uh, uh, Vanuatu. She was with us about two and a half years ago, and she's home now. Uh, she went as a missionary in training, and now she's a coming back and will be a full-time missionary, so don't uh, forget about that tonight, and uh, come out and worship the Lord with us, hear what she has to say, and given her mission reports and the message that God lays on her heart for us. And then also, starting this Wednesday night, we're going to have our crossover class. Uh, I, that's what we're calling it right now. They may come up with another name, but uh, uh, the crossover class, and uh, it is dealing with uh, young people from the ages of uh, 17 to 22. They're uh, just at that awkward age, and so we want to offer a class for them. And so that will be this Wednesday night at 6.30, and it will start just like all the other Wednesday night activities uh, that are going on. 
And then also going down through the uh, month here, we got a lot coming up uh, next month in the month of March. Uh, we got revival starting uh, three weeks from today uh, with uh, the family from uh, Oklahoma, Jennings, Oklahoma. They'll be with us. Their name uh, is Paul Nix and his family. They'll be preaching, singing, testifying. We'll go from Sunday morning all the way through Wednesday night. Uh, if you got a flyer or you got your bulletins, you'll see some flyers in there, and there's some others made up. Take them, hand them out, and uh, give them to somebody. We're looking forward to that. Uh, it'll be a wonderful time with them to, uh, during that time. Then also uh, coming up, there'll be a young adults party on the uh, March the 12th on Saturday here at the church. Uh, you can talk with uh, Sister Amanda and uh, Brother Ismail about that. Uh, they'll be, they're over the young adults. They'll be having a painting party. All right. Some of you who want to get a little more artistic that are in the young adults, that'll be a great time. <laughs> Uh, for you to come and uh, uh, be a part of that. And they're going to be, uh, Celeste, I think, is going to be helping them teach that class on painting. And then also they'll have refreshments, of course. You know, Pentecostals, you can never get together without food. And, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you don't have food, there's something wrong. I don't, uh, you know, the, the uh, food, I guess, is the fourth, head, f fourth part of the Godhead. I don't know. But uh, that'll be uh, taking place. And then we have uh, on the, um, let's see, where is it? On the 15th, Salt Lake Youth will be having an outing uh, on a Tuesday. They're on spring break that week. They'll be having an outing, and they'll be sending home notes on that for Salt Lake Youth. So that'll be taking place. Also, don't forget about Sunday morning prayer meeting at 1015 uh, over here in the back with Sister Jasmine. Don't forget about that. And... Uh, also, we'll be serving a meal on Wednesday night, the 23rd, uh, the last night of revival. That'll be our monthly Wednesday night meal after church that Wednesday night. And so uh, I'll be thinking about that. The Sunday that we start revival, that Sunday night, we'll be having an area-wide fellowship meeting with other pastors and other uh, uh, churches that are invited. And so they'll be coming with the, in with us, and we'll be serving a meal after that service. Man, it looks like all we're going to be doing is eating. <laughs> But uh, uh, we have to keep nourishment. But uh, those are some things that are happening on March the 19th, Saturday the 19th. We'll be having our men's work day. We were supposed to have it yesterday, but it was uh, just not a good day uh, for all those things that will be, go uh, be going on. And uh, really, I just didn't want to get out in the cold and do it, to be honest. But, uh, and I know a lot of you all didn't either. But uh, also this morning, uh, this morning we'll be... Uh, Normally we take up our building fund offering. We normally take up two offerings on the last Sunday of the month. Uh, but since we're getting so close to revival, we're just going to take up a pre-revival offering to help with the expenses. Uh, the family is going to be preaching us a revival. They have six kids, and two of them are married. And so they're, I think the majority of them are coming. And uh, so it's going to take a little more than our normal uh, one-person evangelist or whatever to uh, uh, put on the revival, and so uh, we'll, we'll exchange the offerings today from building fund to uh, uh, early uh, fund for revival. So if you'll help out, appreciate that and all that you can do. But we're going to receive our regular Sunday morning tithes and offerings. They go for the support of the church. If you need to use the ATM machine, I know it's a lot of people were using it when they come in this morning. Uh, Sister Lisa's back there ready. If you're listening on live stream this morning, uh, Sister Lisa has already put up the number that you can uh, text in or call in and uh, uh, get a hold of her during our service this morning uh, to uh, send your tithes or your offerings in today. Can we stand this morning? Uh, if you don't need to use an ATM machine, just bring your offerings forward this morning. There's hands on both sides here. And uh, give to the Lord as the Lord has blessed you. Father, Lord, we love you this morning. We are so thankful, God, that we have the privilege this morning. Lord, we are thankful that we live in a country of exodus. And God, that you have blessed us this morning. Father, I realize that inflation and everything else is hitting, but we're still a blessed nation. Father, we're going to bring our tithes and our offerings at this time. Father, I ask you to bless those that have to give this morning and those who willingly give this morning. Father, bless those, Lord, who desire to give.
prayer today. We have several needs this morning, some that are very urgent. Let's remember uh, this morning, Sister Ruby, she's out with her mother today, uh, needing a touch from in her body this morning. Also, continually pray for uh, Sister Marty. She's going to have her back this morning, but continually pray for her for complete healing of the blood clots and different things this morning. Also, let's remember uh, Benjamin Torbert. I know, I know that many of you already heard this young man. His mom and dad pastored the church here uh, about seven years ago, and they found a uh, major mass on the top of his head, and uh, he's uh, at MD Anderson today. So let's be praying for them, asking God to touch Benjamin and shrink that mass and uh, just work in mir miraculous ways upon his behalf this morning. Also remember Sister Jenny's daughter. She's uh, taking chemo at this time. Uh, remember her. Just remember Ivy Bow. Uh, this morning he's on his fourth or fifth round of chemo uh, today. Also let's remember the Plackers. Uh, continually pray for uh, Brother Eddie's father who's battling cancer this morning. Remember Brother Paul's family. They have some situations they want us to pray with them about this morning. Uh, let's remember that today. Also let's remember uh, my mom as she is struggling with uh, diabetes, with her Alzheimer's and all those things that's going on with that today. And then uh, a very special request this morning. Uh, remember my sister who is a uh, missionary to Slovakia. That is a country that borders right into Ukraine. They live uh, just uh, 75 miles from the Ukrainian border there and 150 miles from the furthest city, western city of Ukraine that was hit by the uh, bombs of uh, Putin this week. Uh, remember them. They're a little nervous. They're missionaries. And uh, on top of all that, uh, Friday she's turned 58 and got put in the hospital in Slovakia. And that's not a real good place to be put in the hospital. But uh, remember her. She's having a lot of physical problems right now and uh, dealing also with the emotions of what do they do next? Where do they go? Uh, because one of the things that they have there in Slovakia is the main pipeline that feeds Ukraine and Russia uh, fuel. And so, you know, you don't know what Putin's going on in his head. So remember them today and uh, pray that God will just protect and move that off the scene. God has a way he can move Pete Putin off the scene. And uh, uh, pray for those wonderful people there in Ukraine this morning. Let's go to prayer this morning. If you're here this morning, say, Pastor, I need a healing in my body. Would you just raise that hand real quickly? You need a healing in your body. Hallelujah. Raise it up high. Wave it this morning. If you need a miracle this morning, raise it up. Raise that hand up. God can perform miracles, whatever it is in your life. And we're going to come right now in the name of Jesus and believe it. So let's pray together this morning. Father, Lord, we just come this morning as a people, God. Lord, we are believing right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you can move mountains. Lord, you said all things are possible through Christ Jesus. Things that look impossible to man is possible through Christ Jesus. And Father, we pray right now, Lord, for those that need healings in their bodies. Lord, many across the auditorium this morning raised their hands, said they need a healing this morning. God, we're believing that this is the service for them this morning. Father, I pray that you'll heal their bodies in the name of Jesus. Minister to them today. Lord, I pray this morning, God, uh, Lord, that you'll bring healing to all the names that we mentioned this morning. Some battling cancer, some battling other situations, God, heart disease, uh, whatever it is this morning. Father, the blood of Jesus Christ, that atoning blood can heal all manner of disease this morning. So we're praying right now. Father, we pray this morning, God, for the people of Ukraine. God, that you will perform miracles. God, that you'll bring them together, Lord. God, that you'll deliver them out of the hand of this terror. God, I believe in that you've got something to show your glory for here. And Father, we're praying and believing with those believers, God, in that nation, in the name of Jesus, God. Protect them, I pray, Father. Lord, I ask you to do marvelous works in this service this morning. Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Can we lift those hands and thank him this morning. Hallelujah. Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
to get ready to come this morning for our offering, for our uh, revival offering, our free <coughs> revival offering this morning. A uh, chance to give and to help out uh, this for our revival coming up this morning. If you need to use an ATM machine, uh, you can use that at this time. If you're listening on live stream again, you can use that at this time. I know some of you probably already did that when you went back to the ATM machine. Uh, just give it both at one time, and that is fine. I already did that this morning, too. So, but for those who did and you'd like to bring your offerings forward, we'd love for you to give, uh, to help out in the expenditures of revival that's coming up. Uh, Brother David, you pray and ask God to bless this offering this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to come and worship you, Lord, through this offering, Lord. We ask that, Lord, whatever they pick up will be for your ministry, and it's going to be used for this family that's coming, Lord. Lord, we ask that you bless that family. Father, we ask that you give them the message that we need in this church also. In Jesus' name, amen. shout glory in the house today. Amen. Thank you, worship team, this morning, and appreciate each one of them helping out uh, this morning. Well, we're glad that you are here this morning in service with us, and it's always a privilege uh, to have you with us, and I appreciate you coming out, worshiping the Lord this morning in spirit and truth. How many's enjoyed this wonderful winter that we've had, hallelujah, this week? Amen. And uh, I know that we enjoy it down here, uh, but it is good to have our friends from the north. They come down to get some sunshine, and uh, uh, look what they got. Hallelujah. It's just what it is this morning. And uh, we come back uh, another time, and I promise you about a month, uh, you'll wish you was back up north when it's about 100 degrees. But uh, it's good to have them this morning. Uh, uh, I'm not going to go through the, all the list, but some of them's from Sepulpa, Oklahoma, and our Sand Springs, Oklahoma. And I uh, told them I preached at a church there in Sand Springs, and it's Landmark Tabernacle. Just thought of that. Amen. And so uh, it's good to have them. Others of them are from the cold Wisconsin. Amen. So this is probably summer for them anyway, but uh, it's good to have them this morning with us. And all the home folks this morning. Good to have Sister Marty back. She's been back out for about a month with sickness. Good to have her back. Let's give them all a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, we're so thankful. And uh, they were telling me that they are a divided family. Some of them's an Aaron Roger fan and some of them's a Zach fan or Dak fan. And so, uh, well, whatever. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Cowboys and, and Packers. Amen. All right. If you brought your Bibles this morning, turn with us to the book of uh, Se- 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles today is where we're going to be coming from. Uh, I feel like we got something for you this morning, and uh, we want you to get in and worship the Lord. 2 Chronicles chapter number 30, and we'll start, we'll read 1 through 5, and then we've got some other scriptures that we'll add in throughout the Word this morning. So uh, uh, when you find that, say amen today. Hallelujah. Can we stand for the reading of the Word one more time? Get your spiritual exercise in, and I promise you we'll let you uh, have a time of rest. Amen. For a little while this morning. The Bible says this in uh, Second Chronicles chapter number 30 and verse number 1. It said, And Hezekiah sent all of Israel and Judah and wrote letters unto Ephraim and Manasseh, and they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord and of Israel. And the king had taken counsel in his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. For they had not kept it at the time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the things pleased the, the king and all of the congregation. And so they established a degree to proclaim throughout all of Israel from Beersheba to Dan that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they have not done it of a long time in such sorts as it was written. Father, Lord, we love you this morning, God. We are so thankful, Father, for all your blessings. God, we ask that you would anoint, that you would minister this morning, that you would touch, have your will. And, Father, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, good morning, neighbor. All oh, you can do better than that. Let them know you lie like them that are here this morning. Good morning, neighbor. All right. Put a little emphasis in it this morning. Something about letting people know that they are welcome today. Don't forget, coming up tonight, we'll have a... Uh, Alicia, so don't forget about that. Sister Webb will be with us Wednesday night here at the church. Don't forget out here in the sanctuary, we're going through the book of Revelation. And we're we're, uh, almost through the 14th chapter. And so uh, come out for that on Wednesday nights if you're an adult here. And then also next Sunday morning, we'll be uh, starting a new uh, uh, revival time messages as we're getting prepare ourselves for revival. So those are some things that are happening here as far as the word goes for the next couple of weeks. But uh, this morning, we want to get right back into the series that we have been preaching uh, here this month. And uh, what we have been preaching on this series this month, we've been dealing with improving our relationship with God. And I don't know how you feel this morning, but I believe that every one of us can look and find that we are falling short in our relationship with God. And there's always room for improvement this morning. Digging deeper, climbing higher heights, and uh, uh, spending more time with God this morning. And so this is the actually the fourth sermon in the series. And uh, uh, the first Sunday we preached on when God goes searching uh, for man. And then we preached on uh, the Valentine's message and uh, dealing with the love of God, that inseparable love. And, And last Sunday morning we preached on... God knows you best. God knows you best. He knows you better than your best friend. He knows you better than your spouse, better than your mama, your daddy, or anybody else. He knows you better than you know yourself. But this morning, this is where we want to come this morning as we bring this section or or this series uh, to a close this morning. But I don't want us to stop uh, this morning and thinking, well, that series is over, so you know, I must be as close to the Lord that I can be, and I must have renewed my faith. But no, I want us to continually seeking the Lord uh, and allowing God to seek perfection in our lives. And uh, I know that none of us are perfect, but we've got to strive for perfection. How many would say amen this morning? And so I want to preach on renewal today. 
renewal. Amen. Renewal. And uh, everybody say that with me this morning. Renewal. Hallelujah. You know, in life, there's some relationships that you want to maintain. And then there's other relationships because of miles, because of uh, situations. Uh, you may not see those individuals uh, for a year, two years, but when you come together with those individuals, automatically you are just renewed in those relationships. They're just automatically there. I have some very close friends, and uh, uh, I guess uh, when you would talk about the ministry, uh, uh, in the ministry, ministering families such as my own and uh, others, there is kind of a uh, uh, sorority together, should I say, and uh, uh, when we come together, it's not like we hadn't seen each other in a year or two years. We just kind of pick up where we left off and we just continue on and uh, uh, have that relationship and that friendship. But you know with God, sometimes it's not that way. We have to stop and say, God, we have drifted away from where you want us to be. We have drifted from the place, God, uh, that you have called us to be. And, and we have to renew that relationship with him. And so this morning, uh, here in this story that we find uh, Hezekiah in, that is what we're going to be preaching about. Not just Hezekiah, not just uh, the spiritual leaders of that day and that time renewing their relationship with God, but that the whole nation of Israel and Judea and Judah would begin to renew their relationship with God. And this morning, church, when we look at our world today, we look at the problems on every side this morning. We look at the situations today. You know, the main problem this morning with the world, it is not what's going on in Russia this morning. It is not what's going on in Baghdad this morning. It is not what's going on in Budapest, in other places around the world. But friend, the main problem with the world today, the main problem with the United States this morning has nothing to do with who's in the White House, but what it has to do with a spiritual problem that is going on in our world today. And we as a church, we as a people of God, we as a family of Christ, we need to renew that relationship with God and make a renewed commitment saying, God, I will go where thou leadest, Lord. I will follow your ways. Lord, I will honor your righteousness. Lord, I will allow you to be a part and be the leader of my life this morning. How many would say glory? But so many times we are indifferent with God because it goes against our nature this morning. And so this morning in this text, we got, we're going to deal with this text probably a little more in depth than what we normally do this morning. And uh, uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to be preaching kind of a, uh, a topical sermon this morning, more explaining about this text if the Lord will help us for a little while today. But when we look at this text this morning, it is taken from details of a young man who is by the name of Hezekiah. Everybody say Hezekiah this morning. Hallelujah. Maybe some of you know some stuff about Hezekiah. But we want to follow some of his early years in his kingship. Hezekiah was 25 years old when he became the king over the nation of Israel. Now, if you would have asked me to be the king of a nation at 25, could you imagine what it would have been like? Amen. We were at uh, uh, 25. Yes, I was pastoring, uh, pastoring my first church in, uh, in southern Illinois there. But, you know, I still didn't know anything, and I was still learning, and I'm still trying to figure it all out. But to be the king uh, over all the nation of Israel this morning, and he did not inherit 
a kingdom that was problem free. Even though he inherited from his father, and you would think, well, things probably would just kind of fall in order as a king would step down and another one come in. But in his uh, uh, kingship, he inherited a kingdom that had many, many, many uh, difficulties this morning. Now, now financially, uh, his rule was sound this morning. Uh, politically this morning, uh, his rule was sound this morning. Uh, even in relationships uh, with their enemy countries around him, uh, his father had secured uh, that relationship with them this morning uh, that was going on around them. But we find the reason why Israel had a good relationship with their enemies or their allied countries was the same reason why spiritually, spiritually this morning, they were in a vast, vast, vast of a problem this morning. You say, what do you mean by that problem this morning that they had? They were in a very poor spiritual shape. You know, this morning in America, I don't believe that we can stand here this morning and say, right now in America, financially, we're in great shape. Uh, we can't stand here this morning uh, and say, in America, political scene, uh, we are in great shape this morning. Uh, matter of fact, we can't even say with our allies uh, and our enemy, enemy nations this morning uh, that we have good standings. Uh, but church, this morning, there's one thing that we can say that we are. America is in bad shape when it comes to a spiritual time in America in the relationship with God. And if there's ever an hour that America needs to renew their commitment and renew the people of America, renew their heart with God, it is in the time that we're in right now. Amen. We're right there where America needs to wake up this morning. But Hezekiah, the father, his father, excuse me, Asa, was a man who had turned his back on the spiritual needs of Israel. First of all, Hezekiah had decided that the temple of worship was not really needful any longer, that it was not needful for the church, for the people to gather this morning. Doesn't that kind of sound like what's going on right now in America, all around us today? How many would say amen? I mean, we're just right there, kind of right in that same area today. We find that he closed the temple down. He shut down all the places. And uh, he took all the artifacts out of the temple. And the reason why he was at ally or at peace, should I say, with his neighbor enemies, that he took all those things uh, and he gave them away to the Asian kings uh, to enhance his relationship and enhance his relationship with those who were coming against Israel and Judah. So he took the things that were spiritual and he gave them away. The articles and the things that were in the temple, and he gave them away to their enemies this morning. And he had done all of that. Not only had he shut them down, but Hezekiah decided that there was no need for the Passover this morning, the covenant of meals of God's people together. He allowed the people to absorb and observe should I say, uh, the Passover this morning uh, just the way they wanted to. It was no structure, no order, uh, not the observation that they had normally used this morning uh, at the time of the Passover. Uh, he had just quietly led the people away from God. Uh, this morning, church, let's waken ourselves. Let's waken ourselves. I'm giving you a message of warning. Also this morning, let's awaken ourselves. Right now is not a time for the church to withdraw from the presence of God. 
if there's ever a time that we need to assemble ourselves together and stand in prayer this morning and believe and bind together, the church needs to come together right now in this hour and the time that we are living in this morning. You see, this morning, he draw the people away from their commitment and to God and the recognition of depending upon him this morning. Church, without him, we have no hope today. He is our hope. He's our answer this morning for the troublesome hour that we are living in this morning. He's right there in the midst. And so when Hezekiah, just give me some history here. When Hezekiah came into the kingship and become king, he looked at the total situation of Israel and he diagnosed the need specifically that the nation must, must return back to God. That the nation must return back to God this morning. And so when we look at that, we need to consider renewal. What it means this morning, we need to look at ourselves and begin to consider what it means for a renewal this morning. Our relationship with our God is more important than any other relationship we have. We should have this morning, if you are married this morning, your relationship should be like this. God, spouse, the rest of your family, your church family, that's kind of the way your relationship should be this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. It should be centered, though, around God this morning. And we need to re bring it back around, should I say. Circle the wagons and say, God, here I am. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but I stand in need of you this morning. So many times we can look at one another and we say, well, I'm better off than that one. My family's better off than that family. But really what we need this morning is to renew the relationship with God and quit saying, well, I'm better than this one or, or I'm far ahead spiritually than that one. Free in all of our righteousness, the Bible says, is as filthy rags. We only are what we are through the grace of God this morning. Nothing within ourselves. We can say, well, but Brother Hafford, you know, I haven't been so and so. Brother Hafford, I haven't done this. I haven't done that. It doesn't matter if you was just a good old boy and you got saved, a good old girl, and you never done anything really wicked. You still had to have the same Savior as the one who was the worst of the worst. Paul said he was the chiefest of sinners, being there the day that Stephen was stoned. But Paul also recognized that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses and saves and changes. It doesn't matter how vile you was, everyone needs the blood of Jesus Christ to be applied to their lives to change them and be saved and to wash them and make them white as snow this morning. But we're living in a, a world this morning that when we think about renewing, we think about others. And we look around and we say, well, they're a good person. That one's a bad person. And I'm even better than that good person this morning. The fact that many struggle this morning to accept of a renewal of a new relationship with God, or a renewal of a relationship with God to renew it. They struggle renewal because renewal many times brings a product of change. Now, most of us, we don't like change, do we? We like to do basically the same thing, amen, what we normally do, you know, through the week. Sunday mornings, I have kind of a ritual on what I do on Sunday mornings when I get to church and how I prepare uh, for today on Sundays is different than any other day of the week, but the rest of the week I have the, my, uh, the things that I do, you know. It's kind of like trying out a new restaurant, amen. 
You ever walk in that new restaurant? Just kind of use this as an a illustration. And uh, you read the menu, but you have never been there before. You look at that menu, and you try to think, well, I want to get something close to like what I like at the other restaurants. So I don't get totally surprised. Amen. Sheila has been trying to learn to eat healthy. Give her a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Her meal before she began to try to eat healthy was fried potatoes, baked potatoes, corn on the cob, and red beef. Amen. That was all she liked, basically. And shrimp. Amen. She liked shrimp. And, uh, and fried catfish. Those were about the, the main things of her meal. And so she had never tried asparagus. She had never tried Brussels sprouts, and I haven't either, and I'm not going to. Hallelujah. But now I do eat the asparagus. She had never tried broccoli. She had never tried some of these things that squash. Amen. I got her to eat the other day a squash spaghetti. Amen. Oh, boy, that was, she looked at that. I said, open your mind. Open your mind. And so we, she began to try some other things. Guess what? Now when we go out to eat, she, instead of ordering the big baked potato with all the butter and all the good stuff that everybody loves, she's been eating broccoli. Amen. And uh, I, I just say, wow. You know why I like her eating broccoli? Because she only eats half of it. I get the rest of it. Amen. But uh, she's broadened her. So the other night we went somewhere and, and we had not, haven't ate there. And she said, well, I don't know. I said, you got to broaden your horizon. There's more to life than those four things. You know, she was like little Timmy. Uh, all he ate was green peas and hamburger and one other thing, and that was it. There's more than green peas and all of that. And she's beginning to do that. But it took a while for change to come. And this morning, when we look at our own lives this morning, we get wrapped up in the product of everyday life. And we think, well, we're getting by. Friend, I don't want to get by spiritually. Uh, I want to live a life that is victorious, uh, that we will hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Uh, enter into the joys of heaven. Hallelujah. Friend, we want to hear, well done. Well done. We consider this morning change is a difficult thing. People find change hard and moving towards God and renewing of their soul. If you read in the Gospels, Jesus talked about in several places in all four go- or three of the Gospels about renewal, about change going on. Speaking of tradition, from the Pharisees, how there had to be change that was going on. You know, some people, they lose out with the church because they move the piano two inches. It doesn't matter to me if we have the piano out here or down there or, or wherever. Amen. As long as God's spirit is here, that's all that really matters this morning. Others this morning, uh, that we get caught up in that. But change sometimes brings in a new kingdom. Jesus said, amen, to, you can't put new wine into old cisterns this morning or old wineskins. You say, well, why? Because the electites of the new wine will begin to break down the old wine cisterns that would hold them together and they would begin the process of decaying and ruin the wine and bust them. And so you had to have something new. And this morning, friend, that's the reason why we say and we pray sometimes, God, renew me. Wash me, make me whole again, put me back on the potter's wheel. Renew me. And it's hard because when you get on that potter's wheel, it's not easy. It's very hard sometimes. Feeling all the situations going on. 
See, when we look at renewal, we got to be flexible. And we must be ready for the Holy Spirit's change in every one of our lives. We must be softened to the Spirit, but have softened by the power of the anointing oil of God working in our lives today. The Jewish people had found that if they would bathe those wineskins in olive oil for many days, they would be soft and they could be reused it again. But the problem is when the skins become very stiff, they would become to a place that they could not contain the 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 uh, uh, wine and those things of that nature and they would burst this morning uh, and that is what God wants to do with us this morning uh, he is trying to say to us today it is time to let the Holy Spirit uh, let the Spirit of God the all of God soften us uh, let us touch be touched by his Spirit and give us uh, what we need to be flexible to move and pliable within the Spirit with him God wants his people to to work in harmony with him. And that has to come by our pliability. We can't always be the exactly the same. When I was preaching revivals, sometimes we would go to churches. And we would go year after year after year after year after year. And many of those churches, they ran the exact same. They did the exact same. All the time. There was never any change. And their churches become stagnant. You know, sometimes in church world, and I'm not saying I want this, but sometimes you got to lose people in order to grow. Because they have to learn that change is necessary. We're living in a different culture than what we lived when Sheila and I started out 30-some years ago, 34 years ago. I mean, 34 years ago on Sunday morning, we were Pentecostal, and our churches were Pentecostal, and, and man, we could get to singing those old hymns, and, and uh, little sister so-and-so shake her leg twice, and uh, brother so-and-so shout hallelujah, and man, the whole house was tore apart, people shouting and running the aisles and walking the back of the pews, and uh, today we live in a world, you all just look at me. Yeah. Amen. It's changed. So now I gotta study and I gotta preach and I gotta come up with things. I did back then too. But people are different. The way people give their heart to the Lord today is different. Oh, it's still the same blood, the same anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. It's the same blood. But we're living in a generation that you have to tell them and explain to them, and then they have to come to a concept that they need Jesus. Where when we started years ago, conviction would fall and people would come into the altar and get saved. And sometimes it's a, a month, two months, a three months time before they fully yield to the Holy Spirit and give their life to the Lord and get saved. But that's the culture we're living in. God hasn't changed, but we have changed. Do I like that culture? No. But I also understand we got to reach people however we can in this day and hour. And we give them every opportunity when they come to church to give their heart to the Lord. We look tonight, first thing I want to preach about, and i got to hurry, is the renewing of our commitment to worshiping God. Renewing our commitment. Hezekiah designed for renewal a very, very, very specific design. And that it would study that people need to make that decision of commitment to the house of worship. The first thing that Hezekiah did was to redefine the purpose of the temple. This morning, the church here is set apart from all the other buildings 
We're not a building of commerce. We're not a building this morning of uh, much operating for us merchandise and things of that nature. But the building here is set apart for the worship of God. Yeah, we do other things in this building at times. But the main purpose here is to worship God. And he sent his priests to the temple with instructions to cleanse it, to make it ready for worship this morning. The second thing, he gathered the people together to sanctify themselves in the temple. I remember when I was coaching high school ball, and one of the teams that we played, we were a, a private school that I coached high school at. We was a college preparatorial school, Christian school, but as a college preparatorial. Uh, almost every kid that went there got a full ride to a major university. And so we had to go places and play teams that were at the level that these guys were in. And I remember we went to this church, it's a church school in Tupelo, Mississippi. And we got there and they took us into the sanctuary to where that's where we was going to play our game. On the front half of that sanctuary, they had a full band and everything up here and set up like we have this morning. Then they had about as many rows as we have as pews here. And then across the back of that sanctuary was where they played basketball in that sanctuary. That was the first time I had really been in something in that setting having preached all over the United States, but never in a place of that nature. It was a full court basketball court right behind the back pew. And man, you, I want to tell you something. I wasn't comfortable. I just didn't, you know, I couldn't yell at my boys like I wanted to. I couldn't yell at the refs like I wanted to. I just... If I didn't like the call that the, the ref made, all I could do is say, help him, Jesus. Help him, Jesus. When I really wanted to say, open your eyes here, I'll let you borrow my glasses. And the, you know how it is. When my boys fouled out and they were mad, I'd have to they'd come back and say, Jesus sees it. It's all right, you know. Because, and I'm not preaching, I know churches today because of economics, they have to use their buildings for many different things. It's not like it was when this church was built. But because of economics today, they can't afford a gymnasium activity center, so sometimes the sanctuary becomes. But that was the first time that I had been in that setting. You'd have to worry your pastor didn't get a technical foul on him that day, you know. But we come back again, and I still didn't feel comfortable. Because I felt like the place of worship was being diluted down for activity. Friend, this morning, like I said, I understand in the world we're living in today, economics, we have to do things like that. But that was the first time I'd been there. But I want you to know this morning, Hezekiah, he sent them. the priests, the Levites, to go in and begin to prepare the place, the sanctuary, to be renewed in the Spirit of God. And this morning, church, every time we come here, every Sunday, every Wednesday, this place should be renewed as a place of worship and the holy divine anointing of God should rest upon us, hallelujah, and we should feel the divine Shekinah glory coming down and there should be that renewed commitment of God. I'm only here to focus on worshiping you this morning. Why don't you say amen? It's not the end. It's not on whether we got a new suit or or we got a new pair of clothes, or whatever it is, or who's driving the nicest car in the car in the parking lot. 
into the place that is silent, where our hearts can begin to reach, where our hearts can be, begin to magnify, our hearts can begin to worship the Lord, and all of a sudden Hezekiah is telling us it is time to recognize the source of our power, the source of the anointing. The source of our strength this morning. Uh, and that is that we need God. When he told the men uh, to go in to the sanctuary, into the temple, and begin to prepare it, he was saying, that is our source. Uh, it's not about our allies with our, uh, with our friends. Uh, it's not about our peace treaties uh, that my father made with our enemies. Uh, but our source this morning, uh, our help cometh from the Lord this morning. Uh, and this morning, church, you're here because you realize uh, that there's no greater source uh, than the power and the anointing of God resting on your lives this morning. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Somebody shout hallelujah today. Here's what we need. Typical we need the peace of God. Then he made that covenant. Secondly, this morning. He made it this morning with his people. God wanted to renew that covenant. And this morning, he's telling you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's wanting to renew that calf. He's wanting to, you to understand this morning when you renew with him, he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to be that friend that sticketh closer than a brother this morning. He's going to be that one that is looking out for you in the middle of the night. So he tells him the second thing here. He tells him, he said, let's renew this covenant with God. The Passover meal was linked to that covenant meal. The meal where they would sit down with their families. And they would come together and they would remember and they would think about their heritage and their ancestry and the marvelous works of, of deliverance from Egypt and how that he led them through the wilderness and all that they would eat of the same meal and talk about the exile of, out of Egypt, he man, and the, how that the remainder of Ch Pharaoh's children said that they were in bond, but God had set them free this morning and church this morning when we come into this place it's not about the the latest win on, on games it's not and I love sports more than probably any of you here this morning it's not about what is going on continually around the world and what's going on in your life this morning and, and the parties you went to and this and that but it's about covenant and remember that I once was lost but through the grace of God I am found hallelujah I once was on my way to hell was bound by sins of chain but they have been broken by the blood of Jesus Christ uh, to set us free this morning that we may have life and have it more abundantly that's what it's all about Passover meal was a, a symbol of bondage of God's deliverance from, from the freedom that he led them toward, toward that promised land. Because they lived in the promised land, they were people of promise. They were people of promise. And God made a total provision. 
provision. When I say total provision this morning, I meant a cloud by day and a fire by night. That total provision this morning meant the manna would snow down from the heavens in the night. And the people would gather it. It meant that Moses went out one day and just hit a rock. And the waters begin to turn. And they begin to drink. Another time he just cut down a, an evergreen tree and threw it into bitter water. And it becomes sweet. This morning that is provision. It meant that for the 40 years they were walking around in the wilderness. Their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. Their tents never grew old. Everything was a constant evidence of God's presence and watch your eye over them. And in your life this morning, since you found God, have you not found that his provision is enough, amen, that he's watched over you with the longevity of life. He's watched over you with health this morning. Hallelujah. He said the, bad, the, the righteous seed shall never, hallelujah, I say never, everybody say never this morning. Never be begging for bread. He's always watched over us. There's provision. Take this time. Oh, the God's presence. The people, they had forgot about that. Because Hezekiah, or excuse me, Asa this morning, his father, destroyed the ideal that God was their provider. This morning before church, I was getting ready, and I hardly ever listened to news before church. But I was listening to news in some conservative station this morning as I was getting ready, trying to catch a glimpse of what is going on in Ukraine and all of that area. And as I was listening to this conservative news station, they said this morning, they said, what Putin thought would divide the nation of Ukraine has brought it together. He thought he could come in on that western side and the people be divided and it would just fall right into his hands. Because they had so much more power, so much more military, and they would feel overwhelmed. But now, after three or four days into this thing, they found that the people have renewed themselves to the commitment of their nation. Men and women are picking up arms to defend their land. What they thought, whether you realize it or not, in the Ukraine, it's one of the most Christian countries in the whole region of the world. They thought, well, it will destroy the influence of the church and the people of Ukraine would lose their faith. But what it has done, now they're out on the streets having prayer meetings. They're out on the streets renewing and the people are coming together. Do you know that Ukraine is not just a nation that America has been sending missionaries to, but Ukraine is a nation that also right now is sending missionaries out because it has become a stronghold for the Christians. So what they thought would divide, and here as of last night, they begin to push back the Russians from the capital city around them. Now, I ain't saying that they're giving up or they're going to walk away or Putin's going to throw everything together and say, throw in the towel. That's probably not going to happen. But the people are rising up and saying, listen, we've made a new covenant. We're going to stand. You know what Israel did this morning? Israel sent 100,000 tons of supplies to them. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Israel, oh, Judah, the smallest of all, 
sending them a hundred thousand tons of supply, food, medicine, military equipment. Why? Because they recognize and they realize what is going on in the region. This morning, church, we as a church, we have to renew our covenant and say, listen here, devil. We're not giving in, hallelujah, because greater is he that liveth within us than he that liveth within the world this morning. How many would say amen? Hallelujah. The Bible said right hand. In the right hand there is victory in God this morning. That major hallelujah. The Bible says that you've been made to come overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony this morning. The Bible said that he's made you more than a conqueror. You renew that covenant with God. You renew that covenant with him. And friend, you can say, get thee behind me, Satan, this morning. Sheila and Sister Brandy have come this morning. And you hear that covenant. I was going to talk on that plan of worship, but time is running out this morning. And how and also God's plan, if you'll put it up there real quick this morning. God's plan for unity. God bless man, man and woman, equal unity. I wish you'd say amen. If we're going to renew, you've got to tell them one with God. We can't live in a divided nation, a divided church. The church can't be divided with God. Hezekiah, he sent the priest down to renew the temple. And then he calls the people together to become united for one purpose. And if there's any one thing that God's people needs today, it's a purpose of unity. And when I say the purpose of unity, de the devil, Satan, has divided. Many have lost direction. The last year and a half, many have lost direction during this pandemic. Satan has divided with fear. Stress of the world going around. We have lost sometimes our thrust or our purpose. What happened with Israel in the day of Hezekiah is an expression in the words of Judah. It said, Also in all of Judah, the hand of God was given unto thee. think of this, one heart, the Bible says in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 1, on the day of Pentecost, there are one accord, one heart, one mind, when it fully come, Holy Spirit fell upon them, if we're going to be Pentecostal in these last days. stand all over this place. One man said this, he said, many churches are frozen together. Frozen together. Instead of being melted together by the fire of God. We need the power and the oneness of God with a unity and a purpose and a vision. So Satan can't destroy Satan can't divide. Satan can't defeat. We are one in God. In that unity, we find purpose. We find strength. We find power. We find hope. We find the heart of God. Both body and spirit and soul. He said, let us come and worship. What do you say? Let us rejoice.
so much more that we could have preached on this morning. Lord, we ask you this morning to prick our hearts, to convict us, God. Father, we just want to celebrate and give you praise and give you glory this morning. We're in verse number 26, and I didn't read it this morning, that 30th chapter, it says, for 